great morning. Great morning. Great morning. And welcome back to another episode of Great Morning. I'm your host, Christian Murmur, Merms, Merm Dog, whatever the fuck you want to call me. And to the bottom left of my computer screen, we, you know what, hold on. You know what, before I actually straight up introduce Stephanie here, let me, let me, let me talk about something really awesome that happened the other day. All right, let me talk about something real quick with Stephanie, right? So <laughs> Stephanie, you've been on now do you know how many episodes you've been as co-host? Yes. Do you know? I don't, quick? I'm not even sure. I know it's like maybe like 10 plus. You no, know, close. You've been on for 11 episodes, but you've been oh. co-host, including this one for nine. All right. Nice. You're almost at the 10. So you've been with us, you know, as the, you know, part of the great morning family now for a little, you know. A little while, a couple, you know, a couple months now. We, we've I been having a good time. About a quarter of a year, man. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we, we've been having a quarter of a year. If you go by, it's been, you know, taxes it's and been a great, kind of great old time with you. But like I said, you were part of the family before, definitely. But something happened recently that definitely made you like all three of us into the pyramid, right? And what happened was <laughs> you found the courage, the strength to order <laughs> Jimmy and I. Now, Jimmy and I, you know, this, <laughs> we've been here at Great Morning, the beginning, you know, this is this has been the beginning with us. And, you know, I won't get into de- complete details about it, but you were saying you needed us to figure out a time for something. And we weren't answering you back right away, uh, probably because, you know, we didn't see it. You know, Jimmy was off doing humanitarian work, as he always does. And I was probably off getting fucking hammered or something. Right. Right. So you hit us up. and. We didn't hit you back right away. And then you just say, pick. <laughs> That's all you say to us. You tell us, pick. And I was like, holy shit. She's telling us what to do. Dude, Jimmy, we, we, we got to be scared now. So I was like, all right, shit. All right. You know, I was a little drunk. I was like, all right. You know, I kept calling her the queen and stuff. <laughs> but, you know, I was getting like scared there for a minute. I'm like, you know, Jimmy, next time we come on here, we're going to get Stephanie into the call. And she's going to have these two other guys in the call with us. And one of them is going to be like Johnny. And he's going to kind of look like you. And there's going to be another guy named Christopher that kind of looks like me. And Stephanie's just going to be like, hey, you know what? You, you, guys, you guys take the day off. You know, we're just I'm, I'm going to do the podcast of these two guys today. We're going to be like, Jesus Christ, did she just fucking fire us? That's that, I feel like that, that's coming. Now. <laughs> no, I love you guys so that. much. I love you guys so much. Let me tell you what I love about that, man. I love that because whenever you're able to do something like that, right, You, if you're able to make a decision, that's less decisions that somebody else has to make. You know what I mean? So that's freeing up time. That's time management. That's development. So, you know, one of the keys to success, man, honestly, is being able to duplicate and also call shots. So that energy that you have, whenever you're calling shots out like that and you setting up a set time, like, yo, it's going to be this or it's going to be this. We trying to rock with that. You need, I need you to bring that energy every time. Cause like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> listen, 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 listen. I've been drinking. So like, y'all going to stop. Because, uh-huh. what? Listen, listen, I'm going to talk all right and shit. I'm going to stop this shit. Yeah, so I want, you know, some things have changed since that moment. So we've officially found her, her title. So I will start again. To the bottom left of my computer screen, we have the Queen Region, my sister from the East, that Puerto Rican mamacita from Spanish Harlem, your grace. Stephanie, how you doing today? Hello, how are you doing? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, me, I'm well. I'm doing fucking superb today. I've been drinking a little bit of whiskey, a little bit of Jameson, and the bitch is a little bit wet. But other than that, I am fucking, I'm great. <laughs> I'm great, you know, like I had some like medical news and shit, but like other than that, like a bitch is chilling. Like, wait, I, wait, wait, like, wait. I, I just asked you before though. I was like, I was like, wait, are you are you okay? Like you sounded drunk and you're like, oh, I'm I'm not drunk. That's how she said it to me. Like, Guy, I'm fine. Yo, I'm I, yo, 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 I gotta intervene, man. I love that because let me tell you, 
Steph is a fucking human highlight film, son. Like, yo. <laughs> she, listen, don't be surprised if this <laughs> nigga have her own primetime show one of these days because she is a wire that's live as hell. Oh my God. Thank you you. gotta oh, love wow. it. It's not, it's not fake. It's what she is, though. Jameson or no Jameson, that nigga is Jameson. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. No, no, but I'm just, I'm just making the point that like I asked, and you said you're like, oh no, I'm fine. Don't, don't worry about it. I'm, I'm okay. I'm not drunk. And yes, then you just said uh, you were drinking whiskey. <laughs> yeah, I want well, that I talent mean, in my life. Yeah, can like, I, I'm, can I get? Oh, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. She's like one minute, man. Like, hold the fuck like, up, guys. I'm out here. We're baby, chilling baby, right baby. here with the whole fucking bottle of Jameson right here. What are we talking about? Oh, Bang. I believe you. What we talking about? You know what Never I'm mind. Saying? I believe you. <laughs> this is gang, 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 right here. This is that oh motivation. And then you know, most importantly, I got my baby daddy right here. He's rolling up my spliffs, you know, because we're gonna be here together <laughs> and shit. So thank you, baby. Daddy. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> That's my brother. Yeah, yeah, we don't we don't know his real name. We just refer to him as Baby Dad. <laughs> Ty. I believe his name is Ty. No, you know what? I, I at this point I don't want to know his real name. I just Ty that's Rob. that's how we got to refer to him. He's baby daddy. He's Everybody baby knows daddy. him across the fucking world as yep. baby daddy. Yep. That is that Puerto Rican mama says baby daddy. That's right. <laughs> I love you, puppy. Oh. Oh man, I'm glad you clarified because they might have thought it was my baby daddy, but you know, that's Yeah, just in case, you know, you never know cuz things Yeah, happen. exactly. Well, hell yes, Stephanie. I'm I'm glad you know. Yeah. I'm, I hope you're excited about your new title, and I uh, I hope. I love uh, it. Yeah, I, I'm really glad you're having a, a good time. But you know, mo- moving along to the left of my computer screen, we have the boss, the pimp, the CEO, our chief, slightly special himself, Jimmy the Shooter. How you doing today, bro? You know, I know. I always say, you know, like there's an energy in the air you know what i mean like Mm -hmm. i always come out with that hippie shit in the beginning but yo man it's been a really like something is in the ether this is like charging me up man it's like some battery type shit i can't call it i don't know what it is i wish i had superpowers like steph to where i could be like you know what i mean go a whole body 30 minutes later just be like oh hey guys how's it going man i'm good to go but yo you know i'm i'm glad you said that because i've been having this (laughs) feeling like something bad's gonna happen I'm glad you're not having that. No, man, I'm charged up. It's been a beautiful week. You know what I mean? Got a lot of work in. I'm just trying to stay, stick to the disciplines, man, and make it day to day. You know what I mean? Okay. Hell yeah. How, but I mean, like, how was your day? You doing all right? You know? Yo, so you peeping the, peeping the statue? I was, that's what I was hoping you were about to talk about. A lot of th- good things coming out, man, about to drop. Uh, super excited. However, I uh, got a new hobby, guys, and that is uh, making T-shirts and shit like that. Except that's you know, right. I burned my hand about a couple hundred thousand times, but it's all part of the learning curve. You know what I'm saying? That's it's good all part it. of the learning. What What's part of the learning curve? You know Getting how like, some people like are really good initially. Like they'll start something up, and you'll, you'll be like, "Holy shit! Wow! Oh my god! You're so talented at this. You're so good at this, right?" So, yeah. That's not me. I'm burning the shit out of my hands and I'm like messing up a bunch of labels trying to make shirts and all this other shit. But you know what? I'm having a good time learning. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. I mean, you know, th- this is a this is a big thing we've been talking about for a real long time now on the podcast was just straight up merchandise, you know, shirts, sweatshirts, pants, underwear, socks, cologne, you know, deodorant, cologne, deodorant. You know, we tampons. want our oh, that own. Shit. great morning tampons. Fuck you. I was just about to fucking say that. Yeah. How are great you thinking tampons, that? Tampons, bro. You on the same way? Great morning tampons. Yeah, all right. But it has to be scented. Can it be scented? Like, no, who's, who's trying to smell that? What the fuck? I am. I don't know what they do before they. You're going to. <laughs> first of all, first of all, first of all, you don't even know. You don't even know because, like, it's going to be. Well, teach me. Then, <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? This is like straight shenanigans right now because, you know, if you have a scented tampon, like, you should be straight because, you know, like, you're going to be sitting there for my fucking hours. I'd rather be smelling like pomegranate than motherfucking. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. <laughs> before you, before you that was that a jingle. Call, is somebody like, are you sniffing you know, your tampons crazy, before man. you enter the tampons? Is that is the thing? You, uh, I think she's referring to like, she puts it there. I'll say it like that. I'll be nice because we have, it's Stephanie we're talking about. She puts it there 
First and of all, don't be nice because the last episode, y'all said that I was a, a guy. Y'all I didn't me? say that. Jimmy That's said that. Y'all, y'all said, y'all said, Stephanie, I'm sorry, but y'all you like, like one, one of the, of the guys. You like one of the guys. Who's that? All right, I'll say it. I'll say it a really weird way then. The tampon enters you, correct? So the tampon has entered your body. And correct. now you get to say to people, hey, if you want to smell, it smells decent. It smells That's like pomegranate. It smells like dove pomegranate. Well, thank you, Merms, for asking how my day was. It was phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad your day just straight up turned into us talking about scented great morning. Yeah, let's, the, I'm, the excited podcast for, I'm excited for today's episode, man. Oh, you, 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 you don't want us to talk about tampons anymore? You know what? That's fine. We don't have to. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and move along here. That's and fine. we're, we're going to introduce, <laughs> we, we're not going to talk about tampons for 30 no, minutes. We're, we're, we're not, not going to make that kind of We're not doing that today. today. Next podcast, we'll, do, we'll definitely do that. Um, but this one, you know, we, I want to move ahead here and I want to introduce our guest uh, for this, for this well, evening by me. I don't know about you guys, but our guest today, we got a writer, a producer, and you know what, a recording artist with us, Rufus Black. How you doing today, bro? What's happening, champ? How you doing, Reggie? I, I am amazing. I am so happy you're here. You know, I was very excited when Stephanie told us that you were going to come on. She, uh, she, she hooked it up for this episode. So we're really, uh, we're really blessed to have you here, man. But you know, I have something. And if you guys want to get right into it, I, I have something that's going to be a little different this episode. All right. What now, I know that? we usually, I, I don't, I don't mean to do this, but. I was just, I was just so excited, right? I ended up writing a bunch of things down, and I myself came up with an idea for a game. Now I know historically in the podcast, I'm not the one to bring in the games, but this time, I'm sorry, I did think of a game. So if you guys want to play it real quick, and it's all about Rufus here, all right? You guys ready? You want to play it? Is it in Spanish? Why would it be in Spanish? Because right I didn't now, say Herb's Spanish. I said it's, it's for Rufus. I, yeah. But Where you're did in you, get that? you didn't write it in Spanish. But why would I write it in Spanish? I don't even know how to speak Spanish. Yes, espérate, espérate, espérate. You you've been in Spain for like almost a freaking month and a half, and you haven't understand only like what's going on. Yeah, Mary. yeah, and that's what my fucking. Yo 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 Oh, uh, shit. yes, yes, okay. no queso, no queso. Bueno, bueno, déjame decirte, señor Rufus. He's bilingual. Put that in the right. introduction. <laughs> yes, <laughs> sir. <laughs> that, yes, that sir. right there, that shit sounded like some merengue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, C, C, B, N, B, N, uh, uh, nacho, anyway. Como de nachos? You, you hungry? <laughs> It's a you ready to play a game, bro? Never, so we've good. never we rolled into about, a game this quick let's before, into, let's This is going to be an event. About, this is, this is I, because I got, a, I got a lot for it. But, uh, you know, Rufus, my friend, you, you, ready, you ready to play a game centered around you? Let's go. All right. So what I did, right, I saw the study a while back where they were, uh, people were interviewing, like, writers, professors, right? People have written shit, made stories, short stories, novels, whatever, right? And they gave them a line from one of their stories, right? And they wanted to see if they could remember where it was from. And a lot of them forgot, right? Because they had put so much stuff out there. Now you, you've had a lot of music out there. I want, I've written down some of your lyrics to a bunch of songs of yours, right? Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to read the lyrics, random spots in the in random songs, right? And I'm going to say it, by the way, I'm going to say it in like the whitest way possible, right? Oh and then I want God. you to guess, I want you to guess <laughs> You're embarrassed what Steph. song it is, Steph okay? Steph is so embarrassed. Merms, Steph is so embarrassed. She's like, oh my gosh. Uh, Steph can be embarrassed, man. It's my show. Come on. Oh, so, gotta, what's the, what's is... the prize here? A platter of cheese? A cheese the price? Gouda. The price is, uh, we're, we're going we're gonna to see, we're gonna see uh, if, you, if you know these, these songs right away. You ready, Rufus? I'm ready. All right. So tell me, all right. I, I wrote down three. All right. Did it easy this time. This is the first one. Tell me what song this is. So listen carefully. And I'm coming through. With my infantry, and it's obvious y'all MCs cannot see me. What but, song is that from? Coming through with my infantry, and it's obvious y'all MCs cannot see me. Come on, Rufus. Ooh. Damn, I don't know where I wrote that at. Oh, I mean, I stumped him. Rufus, Can you give us a year. Can you give us a year? 
Can you give us a beat? Oh, Can you give us a beat? Oh, 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 that's um ambush crew. That's ambush. Oh shit. I, ambush, ambush what? What's the second word? Ambush. The song is called Ambush. Ambush Crew. That's from 1997. Yeah, dog. I know that. This ambush. That's the ambush record. It's ambush yeah. crew. You're correct. That was just ambush but yes, oh, I, 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 I'm happy I stumped you there for a second, man. Yo, but you, you know, did because you dug deep. You went way back to like 90. That was made in the nine nickel. That was 95 when I wrote that. That's what I wanted to talk about. I, I, went was back, I was listening to a lot of your music and uh I just wanted to talk about that because like you 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 started back then, right? You released that then. I don't know. Maybe you wrote it beforehand, but you know, you released it then back in the nineties. You a uh-huh. totally different time than today, wouldn't you say? Mm-hmm. Like it's times have completely changed, right? Mm-hmm. Going along with music from back then into today, right? What is like one thing at least you could tell me that has definitely changed in the music industry? We prided ourselves off of being the best lyricist. You know, I just think it's a lot of new artists that are, are starting to emerge that are like really tapping into the lyrics and like, you know, it's just these artists nowadays, they just put out anything, you know what I'm saying? They just, they don't care. We had a sense of pride. Um, we had in our era, it was different. Like everybody wanted to be the best. It was a a, a different level of pride. You know what I'm saying? When it came to our lyrics, when it came to how we chose beats. But I can honestly say within the last two years, I'm starting to see more artists like her. Man, her is incredible. The Kendrick Lamars, the J. Coles. Um, It's a kid that I really love named Roddy Rich. He trapped, but he's just just so wonderfully creative. You know what I'm saying? So the level of creativity from from our era, the 90s, that level of creativity has been missing for so long. But now all of a sudden these Doja Cat niggas and you know what I'm saying, Tink and these, 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 and Janae Aiko, one of my one of my top records that's out right now that's approaching platinum, I co-wrote is called On the Way, Pussy Fairy by Janae Aiko. Which is my favorite, let me tell you. I gotta say that mm-hmm, is thanks, my fucking shit. I I'm not going to say anymore, but that is my absolute favorite. <laughs> exactly. Like, people, women love that record. And it features, you know? Janae, it features Janae's sister, Mila J, who I'm in the studio with right now. Well, y- y'all see me here at Killer Press Studio right now. I'm here finishing Mila J's album. So, you know, these type of, those type of artists from this era, they 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 thrive off of being creative. So the creativity is coming back, but to answer your question, that's what was missing for a long time, the creativity and pride and doing your own shit. Like me and Missy Elliott, like, she did he 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 And on my song, I said, cheeky cheeky, ah, chico. We knew that shit sounded stupid, but we was laughing and said, we gonna make the whole world say that shit. <laughs> Perfect. Like we really said that each other, to each other. Like we gonna make the whole world say that. It was just a fun time, man. You know what is? You know, I'm glad you brought that up too, brother. Because there's a couple things I think about, especially when it just comes to like the creation of the art itself. You know, back back then, I'm an '80s baby. You know, believe it or not, but back then, you know, people used to really throw lyrics and rhymes and and words and and play on words. You know, face to face, it used to be a battle thing. I was watching, there's Meek Mill tapes out there with like, you know, Meek Mill just in a block city, man, doing his thing. And it was Mm -hmm. crazy to see the interaction of how people would just be face to face. But now everything is so digital. It's almost like everybody is just kind of, you know, you could be completely around the world and having this beef where people are just, you know, coming at each other. But nobody's got that face to face or that real raw energy. And it's kind of like the energy is still there, but it's just like, I don't know how to explain it, man. It's It's just different. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just right. Yeah. Do you think uh, that this evolution since, you know, the 90s to now, since you've been in music, do you think it's been mostly positive for the artist? Or do you think that it's it's been like a mix of both? Or would you say it's been bad? I don't think you would say that. But do you think it's been mostly a positive evolution? For No, it's a. The, this is a highly n- negative energy 
with artistry nowadays. It's just totally negative. It's like, that's why right now the, the lane is so wide open for, like when people like, you know, her come out, uh, artists like her, um, like I said, I said Tink too. I said J. Cole, I said Kendrick, I said Roddy Riches, a boogie with boogie with the hoodies, different, different certain uh the weekend, especially the weekend. He goes totally moon man MTV with his, some of his records. It's mm. crazy. It's like, yo, he's just not afraid to be him. You feel me? Um yeah. I'm not trying to go off track. It's just like what I love about Steph on your podcast. The, the reason why I don't I love Steph. I don't love Steph just because she's my 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 brother's baby mom, my brother's wife. You know what I'm saying? Steph mm-hmm. just dares to be her. She don't give a fuck. She do her. I want artists that move like how she rock. You know what I'm saying? Like, put your records out. Fuck it. Like, you don't have to do what everybody else is doing. Everybody, we got Lil Uzi, Lil This, Lil This, Lil Bow Wow, Lil This, Lil This, Lil Dirt, Lil Turk. Little twerp, little yeah. turd, like my niggas. Come on, man. <laughs> I mean, little niggas we need, son. And then on top of that, it's like everybody pussy dick, pussy dick, fucking, fucking pussy dick, my booty big. Every oh my God, I couldn't agree dick. more. Oh, that annoys oh. me. The booty okay. big, the booty. Throw some ass in the video. We need more ass yep. in the video. My dude, ass is a way of life. It's what it is. Like, you know what I'm saying? You know, you can you can all it, slap it, jiggle it, saute, it, eat it, whatever the hell you want to do. That's your prerogative. But I don't need to hear about booty every bar, son. So how do you feel it's, about the top bangers? Then? <laughs> like, you know, how do you feel about like, because this clout chasers, man, you got like Nicki Minaj and like uh, six, nine. And it's just like, yeah, it's the beat rock. But the videos are just straight ass in tie dye. And listen, I mean, it's like I said, it's a way of life, but it's the perspective that is put in. Like, you can do records about that. I got a record where, where Mila says, "Um, yeah, I got thick titties busting, not the bra. She says something about being butt naked, playing my guitar. Like, it's like a rock record, and it goes into other things. It's more of a creative way of expressing how she's, how she's confident in her body. But a lot of these ways are just total cliches that repeat themselves. Artist pun, artist pun, artist pun, artist pun, artist not gangsta. You think Crazy. That's a, do you think that's a? I mean, do you think that's a branding issue? Like, do you feel like people are just riding the wave of branding? And people are riding the wave of branding and negativity sells. Like, I was just talking to a friend of mine, a, a, a legendary producer named Stone Paxson yesterday. Like, it's like you consider lame if you're a positive person. Yeah. I've had people say you're you're freaking lame, like on Twitter, because all I'm positive. Is, listen, this chick on Twitter, she tweeted that tonight I'm going to be cooking for my husband and loving on him. And da, 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 da. I'm happy I have a husband that can lead or whatever. She said something like that. And I said, that is so and I tweeted back to her. I said, wow, this is amazing to hear. I'm married to and I'm glad my wife feels the same way about me. This is not the day and age to be sleeping around. And God bless you. That was it. Man, all of a sudden I looked and I seen like, like 15 Twitter Man. reactions on my shit. And I went in, I had chicks out oh, just because she wants to bow to a man and da 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 for a, for a nigga. Man, they was going in on me just because I admired what she said. Yo, it's like, that was it's mad. narcissism. It's, mm. bro, it's narcissism, Crazy. bro. Like, Depression is a trend right now. You know that, right? Word. Hell yeah. Depression, it's so cool to be like a depressed, alcoholic, isolated at home, TikTok trend, do these dance. Like that shit. And it's it's mind. I'm like, how do we get here? Well, maybe maybe they don't want to learn how to cook. Maybe they don't want to learn to be positive like that and know how to do something for someone else. Maybe they're just not a good way to look at it. And your, your Steph. Steph, you're going to feel this one, too. And let Steph elaborate on this, though. This is the crazy thing, Steph. Shorty said, um, and, and this, this Shorty made, like, everybody just come out even more. She said, yeah, I grew up watching my mom and my grandmother, my grandmother and my mom slaving for my granddaddy and my uncle and getting talked to all kind of ways like, shit, I ain't about to be that bitch. I said, damn. Yeah, as a as a Hispanic 
woman you know what i mean like it's just like a woman in general how does that make you feel steph like yeah stephanie how does that make you feel <laughs> um <laughs> that is gone girl we over here <laughs> oh she, man she, that's hey, like yo, Jameson hey, yo, hold on, give her a second let her I'm let her hit her james it. listen let her hit her jameson again because i think that that puff that when she hit that small <laughs> she hit yeah that's what happened bro she hit the spliffy she, she got a balance she got to balance it out and hit that jameson again <laughs> Oh my god. Oh shit. That's crazy. You know, that is a wild thing. It's a wild thing to deal with. It's it's a it's a day and age, you know, and hopefully everybody kind of snaps out of it. One thing that I do love about the industry and one thing that I'm very passionate about is, you know, yes, it's extremely saturated, but in today's age, everybody that does have a voice has the opportunity to put it out. You know what I mean? Like Everybody's just, it's not, well, actually, this is a good question for you, Rue, because would you say that the industry used to be more controlled when it came to just like who you know and who you didn't know? Or would you say it's always, uh, it's always been open? It has not always been open. And that's, let me tell you, back in, this is what I tell young kids nowadays, and they be looking at me like they want to sit on the floor and cry. I be having straight goons. 20-something-year-old goons be looking around me and sitting around like a story time and shit, like they want to get Indian style, like the Rugrats, and listen to me give them stories. <laughs> Back in the day, I used to make songs on cassettes. I had a a, 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 a box, right? Yeah. We called it a box back then. It had double cassettes. And I would record myself singing and playing to the beat. And the way I would stack my vocals is after I laid it on that cassette, I put that cassette in, in cassette B, put a brand new cassette in cassette A, play that and hit record and do my overdubs. All this air was in the background. But you can hear all my harmonies though. Yeah. I would make these demos because I knew my records was hit records because I've been writing all my life. I would mail them to record labels. I used to put them in the mail and send them to labels. Damn. To make it where I am today, I sold some dope, made some money, bought some clothes, selling crack cocaine, my nigga. Got the bread. By the I bought so many clothes because I wanted to shine when I got to Atlanta. That by the time I got to Atlanta, I only had six bucks to my name, and I was living out on the streets with some fresh ass clothes with no bread, B. That's how I, 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 I believed in myself and went to Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Rhyming, yeah. sleeping on park benches, the whole nine, everything I did to get on, right? We didn't have YouTube. We didn't have World Star. We didn't have Instagram and Facebook where anybody, it's motherfuckers out here arrogant as heck. They think they stars just because they get a thousand likes. Oh, Back yeah. then in, in my time, people be looking at me like, wow, like dog, you eat, the, they wasn't responding to us when we were sending um tapes and stuff in the mail. Um, I had to go. I had to go to Atlanta around the time the Boomerang soundtrack came out. The movie Boomerang came out. And you know that's when crazy? I went to Atlanta, huh? I said, no, no, man. I feel that, but you know what's crazy is nowadays people treat likes like money. You know what I mean? Right. Got more likes, man, that'll get you more man. gigs and more jobs than the actual money it takes to fund a whole project. But then when it comes time to fund the project, man, they're relying on sponsors from like fucking. Sh Gym shark is some shit and they can't do nothing about it. So nobody want to invest in themselves. I just I just wrote a song that says nowadays you can get murdered over retention. I guess the new money is having your name mentioned. Oh, right back. Bro. That's cool. <laughs> I just wrote a song about that. Well, shit. I'm I'm glad I didn't write that down for the game. My bad, bro. I was, <laughs> no, it's okay. I was hoping right, I was hoping that would happen. Bro, I'm, 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 no, no, no. I was hoping that that's exactly what would happen is we'd end up talking. I didn't want to just, it would be weird if like I said it to you and you were just like, uh, yeah, ambush crew, go ahead. Right. And like we just moved along and didn't say anything. That'd be fucking weird. I do All have right, two more it. if you want to hear them. Let's get you ready. It. Yeah. So this is number two. Tell me what song this is. All right, here we go. I know my ex violated her restraining order. We both laugh and agree. She got a brain disorder. <laughs> yeah, I, know that now, I, I tried really hard to sound like you there. I tried really hard to sound like you. 
Ready, How did ready, I sound? Say it again. <laughs> that was a oh, lot of laughs. What the shit. fuck? Just like I just became it. sober off of that shit. Oh, good. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I can answer all questions now. Oh, really? Yeah. You want me to start asking you some shit? Yeah, <laughs> yeah let's get. No, no, for real. I want her to get involved because Steph is wise. But that's show me with me and Faith Evans. That's show me. With that is Bruce correct, Bruce Evans. sir. That is show me with Faith <laughs> Evans. That came out um 2017. Uh-huh. And I had actually heard that like mm-hmm. uh, a couple years ago. I had heard that and I had downloaded it onto my phone. Mm-hmm. And when Stephanie uh, told me, about you, you know, a couple weeks ago, it hit me again. And I was like, oh my God, let me listen to that song again. And I think, I think I listen to that song now this past week, bro, probably over 20 times. I really enjoy the way you both sound on that song. I think that's an amazing song. And how, that wasn't the first time you've worked with Faith Evans, right? No, that's no, my, you, that's my, that's my sister, man. You had met way, way in the past, correct? Yeah, hold on. Stay right there. Hold on. Hold on to that question. Don't don't move. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> Man, this is a great game you've came up with. I appreciate that. I figured. Uh, I figured we'd come in with some some assault. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Now. Now. What were you saying about that? Uh, with faith. So I yeah, just just that history. When did uh when did you two uh uh meet? And then like you know after that you maybe start collaborating. Like give me that a uh, little little story there. I met Faith Evans ninety two. 93 yeah she didn't have a deal she didn't have a record deal um or anything like that we was fresh out of high school when i got to new york i'll be sure was like you my little brother man you incredible i'm gonna put you on your first record and i remember i went in the bathroom i cried like a baby like i'll be sure was one of my heroes so he put me on my first record so whenever he would be recording at the studio called unique studios in times square I would go to his sessions. Sometime I would be in a session like Studio A and he would be upstairs on the elevator of Studio B. And I would leave my studio session and go up there to Studio B with him. So I went up to Studio B with him one time and this, this girl was in there singing. And she had like a little bob, like a little prep school girl. She was an overweight chick and she just sounded like an angel, man. And when she came out, she had like a pleated skirt on, a little blazer and some stockings, like she just came from Catholic school. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, you, you sound amazing. You know, da, 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 nice to meet you. My name, my, my rap name at that time was Peekaboo. Yeah. And she was like, my name is Faye. Nice to meet you. Man, I I'll start making her laugh, acting crazy, because I was really crazy when I was young. Yeah. And she used to just she used to come pick me up, man. We would go to um East Orange in Newark, New Jersey, and smoke weed, drink 40s oh, okay. and laugh. And we just became like she became the sister I never had. Like we got so close, like brother and sister, and it's still like that to this day. Like who is this? It's like we we like blood this brothers. Is faith, and this is like, Faith Evans. This is Faith Evans. Right. Yeah. Faith Evans? Yeah, like, She's Faith like my Evans. blood sister, Faith Evans, yes. <laughs> and she, I, I remember the day she called me and was like, I'm getting married. I was like, What? I, I said, She said, I said, to who? She said, You remember I told you, remember I told you the guy that I met that, um, at the, at the photo shoot, she, he signed a puffy too. He signed a puff too. It's big. I said, yeah, I'm, I know I know who Biggie is because I, I saw him perform with Tupac in Atlanta. She was like, yeah. She was like, peekaboo. She's like, please, like, for real, you know, support me. Like, he loved me and I loved him. I was like, my nigga, if you're going to be happy, that's going to make you happy. You know I got your back. I support you. And she married him. And what's crazy is I, when I see the movie and I see how this is such a legendary story and Yo, I didn't feel that way at the time. It's right. at the, it was just life. We were just we were just kids living life and going through our transitional shit. I didn't know it was going to turn out to be this legendary thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And still to this day, we laugh. We laugh at all. We we laugh at so much, but we do wish we do wish Big was here because we me and I was just over her house last week chilling with her and Stevie J, and we were talking about CJ, her and Big Son. 
And I was just saying, you know, it's crazy how his mannerisms is just like big. And he he don't even, he, he's too little to remember his dad. But genetics, he act just like big. He'd be like, I'm going to get this money. He act just <laughs> like big. Never, he act like big, son. Yo, you got to see CJ, son. You got to see him in rare form. You would think he was around his father 24, 30, 365 days a year. He act just like big. Just like big. Yep. So that's yeah. how far me and her go back, man. But now, now it's kind of it's kind of like you've you've grown. You know what I mean? You looking back at like you said 95, 97, you've grown with this industry. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So yeah. to everybody else, everybody else that's on the outside that's watching this, that's, you know what I mean? That's looking at like the whole NWA, looking at all these movements, Tupac, Biggie, this and that. It's kind of crazy because you know. That's like a that's like an artifact, a treasure in a way to just know the background and be like, nah, this is the real fucking reason. This is what's really popping off. And then just knowing and understanding that why. I think that shit is that's wild, bro. And that's a blessing. And the fact that you called it an artifact is deep because I did this one of my songs I'm known for was on a DJ Clue classic mixtape. Um, and it, it was me featuring a locks called Artifacts of Life is something to die for. You know what I'm saying? Artifacts of life. Yeah. And um, it's true because that's what it is. I, I I love the way, I love your thinking. You're very in tune. Um, everything is about vibration. Be perfectly honest with you. What helped me sustain who and what I am in music, I'm going to be real, Steph's, Steph's baby father. Like, you know, my little brother. When I met my little brother, you know what I'm saying? I remember... Me and him walked, it was a festival in Times Square. We was eating. I said, yo, I'm going to put you on. We're going to work together, whatever, whatever. He said, man, I'm just hungry. I just want to learn. He said, be honest with you. Like, for real, my life is the block, you know. Ty was, you know, was a street nigga. But, you know, God allowed me to be able to get him out the street, take him to L.A. And, yo, just his mindset and his youth and his energy and his spirit. And he was, he was like my psychiatrist. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, uh -huh. It's just certain people, like how I was with Faith, is what Ty was and still is to me. There's certain people in this business that's going to be family, like me and El DeBarge. L is like my uncle. L is going to be here tonight. L just sometimes, he don't even want to do no music. He just want to come and just see what his nephew doing. Yeah. Same mm -hmm. thing with me and Aaron Hall. I get on the phone with Aaron Hall. He just want to talk about dogs sometimes. He don't even want to talk about music. Matt Lyon, say what up. Been a while. Hey. Hey. hey! How you doing? How hey, how's it going, man? How are you? Everything blessed. You know, we working it out, working it out. I got a session next door, so I'm just gathering myself right quick, you know? All right. Okay, yeah, definitely, I'll man. Tap yeah, in, I'll yeah. tap your cup. Yes, sir. Okay. Have a good one, guys. Yeah, the legendary too, Matt Lyon, like, even with me oh, and him, yeah. man. Legendary Matt Lyon, same thing. So, it's just like, and this business is rare to create friendships. And when you do, you got to hold on to them because some friendships change, your, save your life. Because I'm going to be real with you. You know, Ty, Ty and Prince Charles Alexander, they saved my life. You know, a nigga can have nine lives and still get offed. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, yo, this, yeah. listen, this, yeah, this, 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 this business will tear you up. It's all psychological. Even with this podcast thing y'all doing, you know, it's it's cool right now. People loving it. Oh, I, I saw it. I love it. I know y'all getting compliments. But when it starts taking off, the hate gonna come. And when the hate don't work, niggas start lying on you. It's crazy. Oh, the hate's oh, already come. I've already I've already dealt with it here. You know, I've I've dealt I with people it. back in Jersey that you know they they start making fun of me. They're like they're like you know as, wow. as the host man, like you know you Christian, like you can't. They say I got a small dick. I'm like, I, I, you know, I don't have a small dick. I was, I was like, like, what does that have to do with the podcast? And they're like, oh, you're fine on the podcast. You're funny. But I just wanted to let you know that you got a small penis. I'm like, yo, that, that has nothing to do with the podcast, man. Why are you fucking saying that? Yo, that's, yo, that's the weirdo stuff, bro. That's right? the weirdo shit that happens. And you got to look at it as the weirdo shit, though. Because when they can't defeat you and they see that you're about to you're about to blow and you're about to do your thing and they can't stop it they start lying or just doing weird stuff saying stuff that's irrelevant like really yeah. that's like how old are we my dude 
I know, really? right? It's, I, I, it's like, we, were you really going to talk about how big my eyebrows are? Like, really? Like, we got to, why you got to talk about my big ass eyebrows? Shit. No, man. <laughs> it's like some people will, well, not even that. Some people will make up stories. Uh, I feel like they'll make up stories about you just to say they was with you to be relevant because of you. Right. Right. Yeah. And that's what's scary because who's to say? Man. Right? Who's to say? It's 2021, man. Motherfuckers is everywhere. Who's to really say? And you know right. what, man, Rue, honestly, man, what I see is like, I just see like, I see that mentorship. I really want to say mentorship is heavy in the game, but you know, Rue, right. if somebody's younger than you or older than you, I feel like everybody brings something to the table. The same thing Absolutely. with Tysi and Steph. I instant, bro, I instantly right. saw that shit. I had her on as a guest. I reached out mm-hmm. to social media. I said, yo, you mad funny. And then we did our episode and I brought it to Chris to the table because we a team. And I'm like, hey, man, what do you think about X, Y, Z? And he's like, yep. well, let's see how she does, man. Let's give her like a little pre-demo, this and that. Blah, blah, blah. I was like, this energy is captivating. The energy that flows, man. Something about people that are really hungry, but also people that have those mentorships and mentality. Like she around Ty all the time. Ty's got that street mentality. Ty can level you down, but that gives you the ability to operate where you trying to operate. You know what I mean? And it's yeah, he, I mean, he he, he 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 definitely built different. Like, when it comes to your gifts or whatever, Ty ain't got to like you. He going to call it like it is. He, he, he cannot stand you. He will be like, but I can't stand that motherfucker, but he dope as hell. <laughs> and fan his hand and walk away on his tippy toes. That nigga be walking on his toes. I know his calves probably strong as hell. Probably kick the shit out of him and break his leg. Because that nigga glide on his toes. That nigga, for real, he stay on his toes in real life. So Steph, Steph, for real, so Steph, Steph is around, Steph, Steph built, look, man, the reason why him and Steph together, because Steph, from the moment he got with Steph, he used to always talk about her, and and he would like, Steph would always have me cracking up. Steph is built different, too, you know what I'm saying? So it's no surprise that they're together, because you can't. You you cannot survive with somebody that don't understand your gifts and your magic and let personal shit get in the midst of seeing what you are and your potential is. Steph's potential is unfreaking deniable, son. She funny, mm-hmm. she pretty, and a lot of chicks just got pretty with them, but they ain't got nothing else. You're just gonna be a pretty bitch just sitting there. I don't need that. They're boring. You know a lot of them. Boring. Yeah, Steph bring a lot of stuff to the table. You know yeah, what I'm saying? You, this this she's stupid this this whole this this whole era this whole era of music nowadays has to understand most of y'all is spectacles not stars Mm. don't be a spectacle don't be takashi 69 being a spectacle being an asshole being a fool doing anything to get attention be a star how did we start liking her because she was going like this not even showing her face yeah she was a star yeah. Steph is a star because she's like, I'm on a podcast. I ain't trying to like, you know, it's a lot of chicks that be like, look, I got a podcast, but you know, can you put a bunch of auto tune on my voice and make me an artist? Steph like, nah, that ain't what I do. I do this. Be proud of what you do. We got a lot of pretenders in this industry. And if you're not wise, you won't be able to hear the real artists and the good artists because you're so distracted by these spectacles. Yeah, I feel like that's that's like another issue. Like there's no more like there's no one is organic anymore. You know, like everything is right. just pretty much the same. And it 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 just sucks. And like, I, I feel like it depreciates music just in general, because it's just like, you know, like they'll they'll say, oh, you know, you know, you're freaking old or you don't understand or shit like that. And it's just like it has nothing to do with that. It's just like when you turn the freaking radio on you legit hear the same shit over and over and over and over and over and it's like damn like you know like there's legit really great artists out there and they do not get the recognition that they deserve at all like one of my favorite um artists right now well for a while now is Melly. She's she's from Harlem. She she yeah. spits. She spits in English and in Spanish. And I love how diverse she is. I love how she can she can like switch up everything. Like she's just 
Like she's so fire. Like she's just so freaking fire. She signed on the Tory Lanez. But like she can be so much more. Like, and I I I just feel because she's not, she's not sexy enough or you know like her ass ain't that big and you know like she doesn't have like she's she's missing maybe a few factors according to to their standards you know but like that girl is fucking special like she's really really fucking great and i wish that you know she she and and amongst others you know like they they would actually have like that opportunity to like really really like shine the way these commercial artists are right now like and you know it's it, i don't know it's music has definitely changed for sure for sure and i i just wish that there was more originality and there was just like more organic people and just you know like not just writing bullshit anymore you know because anybody like legit you can like anybody can fucking decide to be a rapper a singer or whatever the fuck tomorrow and that's it and they may possibly fucking have a hit song like i don't know what the hell i was watching but there was like oh um uh oh love and hip-hop matter of fact i was watching love and hip-hop and renee ricci i love renee ricci let me tell you i love renee ricci but she was like all it took was one song for me to go viral on TikTok. And that was it. She was like, I was signed off of one song, nothing else, nothing else. And I'm just like, what the fuck? Like before it went, like, it was so difficult to like, you know, and it's just like, now it's just like, you can, you can do whatever the fuck you want. And like, as long as you have really fucking good management, you have a really good team behind you. Like, you you pretty much lit like you good you good on on all levels and that's true and and that's what it's all about is that's what we're doing with mila mila has a team um we can we can sign her to rock nation we can sign her to a distribution deal with one of these labels but right now we're doing these five hundred thousand to a million views on our own by ourselves as a squad and one thing i expressed to her too that kalani said kalani said something really deep the other day she posted it like a lot of people on your team make a living off of promoting themselves on the internet it takes nothing for you to tag that person to help them out right absolutely yeah i agree i agree absolutely i got a question man and it kind of goes back to the root and it's not necessarily for me i just i kind of recognize the audience that we have and, uh, you know, for some nuggets or for some for some type of advice or anything, just kind of your experience, that feeling you had from going from that park bench, you know what I mean? From mm-hmm. from hitting the city with just a few dollars in your pocket. How did you know and who did you meet and how did you feel when you was like, all right, man, I got to lay it down like this or it's not going to happen like that. Very like that. You know what I mean? Those butterflies. Did it was it butterflies? Was it overconfidence? What was it that you brought when you was just like that moment when it was like, yo, I'ma do this shit? Yeah, I'm not going off track, but this is going this is this is really gonna bug you out. I love the show called The Walking Dead, right? Yeah. Because it seems like, especially in the early seasons, wherever Rick and them found a place where they can shower or eat. Somehow the walkers invaded or some scavenger dudes, some crazy niggas pulled up like in the prison and, and ruined it. Yeah, that little sense of hope for a second and then it's oh, immediately what, disintegrated, right, they would, I should say. Yeah, they would be living and finally start creating a setup and then somebody or somehow the walkers or something infiltrated and broke it down and they had to keep running. That's why they always say, you don't know what it's like to be out there. And that's real because I was out there in Atlanta and my godmother found me and I went to live with my godmother. And then my godmother's mother who was an older Christian church lady. She starts saying, the Lord told me you're never going to make it. You're not going to make it. Yo, she was like, and you're going to get robbed for everything you have. Yo, my godmother started crying that her mother was saying that to me and I had to leave. Then I went somewhere else. Yeah. Got in a situation, got somewhere else. I felt like Rick in the group. I was couch to couch, house to house. Like, it was like something was trying to stop me. But there was a club down there called the Phoenix. And at that time, Atlanta, 
not only did they embrace booty shaking music, but they was embracing real hip hop. That's where I saw mm-hmm. Tupac perform. And in the middle of Tupac's show, he brought Biggie out. And Biggie did party and bullshit. And that's when Biggie said, a fight broke out. And everybody on stage started fighting. It looked like it was a real fight to where people in the crowd was running and it wasn't a real fight. Biggie rose up and started rhyming and the crowd would go crazy. I witnessed all of that shit. And in that very club, right, um, I started battle rapping. Every week they would have uh, a, 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 a showcase where a rapper would get on. And if you win, you make $100. I had to, this is why I crushed so many MCs in Atlanta at that time. Is because if I didn't win that hundred dollars that every Friday, I didn't eat that week. That hundred dollars was my food budget for the week. Yeah. So I had no choice but to win. And I never forget when I first won. I looked up, TLC was up there rooting for me. And and I literally did I know Dallas Austin was watching me. Okay. So I got invited to Dallas Austin Studio, Darb Studios. And when I got there, Kevin Wells, who managed ABC Another Bad Creation, and he managed a group called Chronic. Chronic was three little boys, and the lead rapper was a little Zane. I start writing mm-hmm. for them, and I got my first check. That's when I became a songwriter. Then I start writing for a group called The Capers. Rashida from Love and Hip Hop was in The Capers. I started getting paid writing for them. And that's the first time I was ever in my life was getting like $2,500 for my gift. And then I wrote for Eric Sermon. Um, and I'm working with him right now, too, on the collabs album. I wrote the Salt and Pepper song on his collabs album that features Missy Elliott that's going to come out soon. Um, but he was part of my journey, too, in the beginning. But, yo, I really felt like Rick and the Walking Dead group, man. I was couch to couch, floor to floor. Man, it took me so long to find peace. So long. Like, I used to, like, at one point, I was sleeping in a one-bedroom apartment with nine niggas. Oh, wow. And, How old were you? And my man, my man, he was a Dominican dude named Richie. He was like, yo, you the superstar, man. We got to look out for you. He said, I did this for you. He put a big old, ma- he had, they had a, the one bedroom, but the closet was real big. He put a mattress in there, and I slept in the closet on the floor. And I oh. ate, pan- and, and sometimes when I didn't have money, I ate pancake mix with water. <laughs> Yo, that's geez. how I make that's the pancakes with water. That's great. I remember, that's, I remember Ty telling me about the the fucking ramen noodles. Man, we used to ramen noodle it down. We would chop anything in it, man. That's how he became a chef because it was time. <laughs> to, yo, Ty, I'm gonna tell you about Ty. He's loyal, man. He was with me when we was pop. We was stinking. We had no bread. We'd figure out ways to eat, and then. When something like 20 bands would come through for me, 30 bands would come through for me, me we, me and him would have these cookouts. He would be frying the chicken and making the going on the grill and making the grill. And we would have people come through and we start networking. And that's how the money started coming in consistently. But before the money came in consistently, yo, me and Ty, me and Ty was in a brand new apartment in LA living on our ramen freaking noodles, son. Word the miss, no lie. Yeah, I've heard the fucking stories. <laughs> that's you know that, that's just insane the the <laughs> amount of uh history. I don't even I don't think it's fair to even call it history anymore. Like this this legend. Like you you have literally lived in a legend that, you know, soon will one day be called a myth and it's just that it's just insane. And you've seen and done and been through any of this shit. And being having done a lot of this, right? Is there anything in this time that you've been in this industry in Atlanta, anywhere, is there anything that you wish was different? Not necessarily with yourself, like not saying like you have regrets about yourself. Is there anything at all that you wish could have been different? No, my listen, man, I'm 48 years old on the 26th of this month. I'm going to be 49. Yeah. Next year, I'm going to be 50 years old, bro. And in my mind, I just think I'm young. Like, <laughs> I don't pay attention to my age. I really think I'm young. I'm like, I'm a bug out when it comes to that. But recently, I had to sit myself down and realize, dog, you granddaddy age. Yeah, you got a two-year-old. You got a two-year-old at 48. <laughs> yeah. I got a two-year-old at 48, no question. 
But at the same time, I'm realizing, man, I am a grown ass complete man. I'm 50 years old. And if I would have did anything differently, when I look at my wife and I look at my kids, if anything is altered, you ever seen movies like when they go back to the future and like, Marty, don't touch it, such and such and such, because you'll alter the future, even though I'm back to the future. <laughs> yeah. Don't yeah, we talk were actually to your talking about that today. Don't say some shit or you'll alter your future. That's yeah. how I feel about it. Like, I, I, I really feel like that. Like, if if I go back and I and I change something, I won't be with my wife, Yummy Bingham. I won't have Aviella. I won't have Tutu. I won't have my oldest daughter, Ryan. So with that being said, I don't want to tamper with it. It was God, God for, he knew me when I was in the womb. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I saw DMX preaching that to somebody before he died. He was lit. He was at the airport. He was telling some goons that I had approached him. He started ministering to the goons and told them that he foreknew me. He knew me in the womb. He knew me. And God knew all of this stuff was going to happen to me. So me personally, I'm not trying to tamper with that. Yeah. I don't want to change nothing. It was supposed to happen. It was supposed to, it was supposed to go down the way it was supposed to go down. Certain stuff that was embarrassing that happened. Yeah. It was supposed to happen. I don't want to change none of it. I, I would agree. I if if someone were to ask me the same question, I think I wouldn't even even if you've seen some horrible shit, I think it's it's supposed to be that way. Right. right. I, I so I agree with you. But you know, moving along, uh, I know we have I have one more song lyric for you, and then I know okay. we are gonna about to do a Jimmy's already got the, the big old dick there. He uh you know we got another segment for you after that and then we're uh you know we're okay. actually getting tight on time here. But here if if you'd like read you the last one. I'm ready for it. You ready? Okay. I'm ready. At night I break out in cold sweats having nightmares about my regrets. I know that line, but I don't even know what record. Uh, at night, I break out in. I thought this was an awesome song too. I, I want to talk about it for a minute. Oh, wait, wait, wait. At night, I break out in cold sweats. Have a Long nightmare. Tom Booty, the interlude. You want me to give you a hint? Yeah. True. It, uh, it was actually for uh, an original motion picture soundtrack. And then I break out in cold sweats. Have a nightmare. I don't know if they used your song you had already written. Or you wrote it for this film. I was going to ask remember you. Tomorrow. Damn. To the head. Come on. Yep. I think you got me with this one, fam. I All really right. Do. I... You, you sure? You want me to say it? Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> hold on. Let me give me one more chance. <laughs> I got you. Go ahead. Damn, I know that rhyme. Do you want me to say it again? Go ahead, say it. What song is it? Oh, what song is it? God's Grace. He's like, <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> God Just damn it. did God, God's Grace last year, though. Damn. Yeah. damn. damn <laughs> but that was on the... Uh... A familiar, familiar live soundtrack with yeah. Omar Goody. Now, I wanted to ask you real quick before we move along about that song, though. Was that, did you write that for the film or was that one of your songs that you, you just wrote and then they used it? It was a song that I wrote about myself and okay. they heard it. They heard it and they loved it because, you know, I've battled addiction and stuff like that with alcohol and stuff like that. Um, since my mid twenties, so it's just about being getting clean. I, and I did other things too, and I was in the streets and um, you know, trying to do things I wasn't built for, like selling dope and stuff like that. That that wasn't me, and I just wanted to get out of that life. And I just felt like God's grace could be a story where I can preach without preaching. You know what I'm saying? Because people don't want you to get on a record and start re- quoting scriptures and preaching at them. They want to relate they want to be able to relate yeah. to you you know what i'm saying i wanted to say like i when i listened to that song i was i i was knocked back for a second that was such an yeah. intimate song with you as yourself and you know as a father and you could just 
you, you know, it's not like I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm getting, it's emotional, but not like anyone's crying yeah. or anything, but you could tell right. just from like every moment of your voice in that song that there was deep emotion in it. And it was a very, it's an excellent song. I just wanted to congratulate you on that. That was a very, it took me back for, for a minute, man. I, I was like, Jesus, there's a lot here. And I, I really appreciate that. And um, the people who have heard it because that movie didn't really do a lot, but the people who, my thing is this, man. I did a live the other day and probably only 60 people um, liked it or whatever. A lot of people tapped in when it was live, but when I posted it, not many people liked it, but like five people told me it changed their lives. And that five people to me was 500,000. Yeah. Because five people was touched by it. So I'm not really into numbers. I'm I'm just going to keep going and keep creating and keep going and keep creating. And five do turn to 5,000 and 5,000 do turn into 50 and 50 do turn into 500,000 at some point. But right now it's not about, for me, it's not about the fame part. I'll never forget something my brother Ty said to me. Uh, that Stephanie's man said to me back, he was, and he, and man, he was, he was so young when he said this to me. He said, Yo, black, you just gotta stop worrying about what people think and keep doing your shit, yo. It's mm. all in your mind. Certain shit is all in your mind. It's all in your mind. And that's what I said to myself, right? Like, well, like, like, wow, I gotta get out of my own head because that's a form of narcissism. Even when you're, even when you're pessimistic and you're in your own, own head too much. You could be such a narcissist to the point that you become a pessim pessim pessimist. You know what I'm saying? Bro. Thinking bad on yourself because you feel people are supposed to hear you this way and this many supposed to be, people are supposed to like you. That's why I, I, I love this meme I posted not too long ago. Before you diagnose yourself with depression, stay off social media for a month. Hi. Dopamine yeah. reset too, man. Yeah. Dopamine reset, man. Yo, I'm not going to lie, man. I, like, there's a lot of shit that's going on, and I'm extremely insecure, and I'm extremely afraid of doing a lot of things, but there's always, like, one of my mentors told me, my grandma listens to our show, right? Like, my grandma. <laughs> yeah, yeah, shout out to grandma. grandma. Shout out to grandma. Shout out to mom. Shout out to my sister. But hey, my family, man, even my little brother, right, he listens to the show, and I left home at 18. I'm 31 now, but I left home at 18, like right out the door. I'm from St. Louis and shit, but I just, I just like one person, right? Like you just got one viewer, no matter what you do, no matter what song you write, no matter what you produce, you just have one. And as long as you keep that mentality of like one, you'll never want to quit. And that's what my mentor told me. So it kind of helped ease out those insecurities. Cause I'm a very just, I'm not going to say I'm very insecure. I'm just, get, I get nervous and very anxious and anxiety. And it takes a lot of uh, oomph to try to get going or try to like a shirt design, something as stupid as a shirt design. I'm just like, man, what are people going to think? But it's like, nah, man, fuck that. One right. person might like it, right? Yeah. You speak. Man. And that's all you need. You, 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 bro, you're a real woman. I love your energy too, by the way, man. You're definitely definitely one of those guys that I won't be surprised to look up and see something groundbreaking and amazing happening because of your, your vulnerability. The fact that you're saying this to me, because what I like to do is I like to express my vulnerability to people because I want men, especially men to know it's okay. Because right. see what happens with women, women at some point start looking at us like you phony as a motherfucker. You ain't never hurt. You can identify with my pain, nigga. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Don't try to don't try to man up so much that you be like telling me to get out of my feelings, but then you go somewhere by a lake where I'm not around and be crying over weaker shit than I am and come home like you tough. Right. It's okay to show vulnerability, but everything in life is about balance. You know, you don't got to reveal all. You don't got to just ah, cry over everything. Right, right. Balance. De deal with each issue as it applies to the situation. See? Yep. And you you seem like that type of person. And honestly, there's nothing wrong with being a bit nervous or whatever. Whatever You being a bit nervous is just you taking pride in your product. So that's a mm -hmm. cool kind of nervous. Yeah. That ain't a sucker nervous. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's definitely like some, this shit's going to be different. I'm going to get some lashback, but it's going to be some like, fuck it. It's still, it's still a great morning. It's still us. So right. It. Right. Thank you so much for playing that game with us, man. That was really that fun. That was the I longest know. game that we've ever had. I, that was a long fucking game. Uh, Jesus but it fucking was, Christ. I, 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 oh, what? You you fucking complaining? You didn't fucking like it, Stephanie? I'm I just that was a lot saying, of fun. Jesus Christ. Jesus. But no, it was wonderful. Yeah, <laughs> taking selfies over there. All right, but we're about to go into another uh, segment here, Rufus. And it's probably, you know, it's going to be our last segment of the episode here. But I'm going to uh, stop talking in a second. After I'm done explaining, I'm going to let Jimmy talk. But he has got this giant dictionary in his studio there we call it the giant dick in the room and it's an old old dick well, i gotta say and something i gotta say yeah something. go for it up. see this right here uh-huh. yeah yes sir so what he's gonna do is he's gonna open that right to a random page he's gonna put his finger down and he's gonna lift his finger up and whatever his finger landed on will be our word of the day now with season three of great morning our guest has to use whatever the word is, in a sentence. And at the end of the season, we're going to rate our top 10 guest sentences. So, no pressure. You ready to play the word of the day? Let's go. Right, play that yeah. Django! <laughs> word. 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 word of the day. Woo. All right, man, I'm going to go ahead and talk a whole bunch of nonsense. That way you can see me, I can see you, and we can make sure everything over here is gravy. You should just have the bronze kneecap yelling in the background. Yeah, we got the producer, the bronze kneecap, taking a little giggle for the jiggle in the background. Start yelling, man. I'm going to look into the camera, and I'm going to open this thing up. Rue, you see me? My screen popping up? Yeah. All right, man. No play, no harm, no foul. This is an original Webster's Dictionary back in like 1940. <laughs> it's crazy, man. Family love, love the family. Bam. Here's your word right here. Let's see what you got crack. Presidents. But not presidents like presidents. I'm, I think I said it wrong. Hold on. Precedents? You, can you spell it and give the definition? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So precedents. P-R-E-C-E-D-E-N-C-E. The definition, act or state of preceding. Motherfucker, that don't help. Going before in order of time, priority, as one event has precedence of another. Uh, precedence. So, yeah. Pres- that's the same definition. I'm not going to look up the modern day definition. That's the same. An as act is. of one going in front of the other. I-, I got the line for you. I'm never hesitant. They're hating because I'm a precedence. <laughs> Dad, I was okay. Okay. Easy work, light work. Why? Why are you I'm showing never off? Never hesitant. You showing off? You showing <laughs> off? I had to recalibrate, man. Our Thank you, sir. Thank bit you, of a sis. You know, we try to do what we do, like we do it for TV. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, she's like, yeah. Uh huh. No. <laughs> You know, well, hell yeah! Thanks for participating in the word of the day. I think that was that was uh, that was pretty good. Um, we're gonna, you know, like I said, we're gonna hit everyone up before we figure out our top ten. We will let you know, you know, if uh, yeah, if man. you made the cut, Rufus. Hopefully you man, did. I hope you know, I did, man. We've had I'm a lot of we've had a lot of good ones. We've had a lot of bad ones too. Yeah, man, we've <laughs> had some interesting words, man. We've had fucking iris, a pungaris. <laughs> what was our porn got the word head head skull crazy. we had harlow harrison on last week uh, harlow harrison. man i don't know how the hell this shit happened but we ended up on the word head and skull for a porn star yeah i think her definite, i think her word and shit was like she's gonna suck out the soul or something it was crazy she yeah was nah crazy. she no she was actually spitting some bars like she 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 had like it took a minute, but it was worth it, though. Like, she had that shit down packed. I was like, oh, okay. Jimmy, you want to hear something funny that someone said to me a couple yeah. days ago? One yeah. of our uh, fans, they wanted to rename, they wanted to remain unnamed for some reason. <laughs> like, anyone gives a shit. I'm going to say their name. Their fucking name was Joe. Anyway, so Joe was listening to the podcast. Fuck Joe. I'm going to say his fucking name. He doesn't, no one cares about Joe. Hey, Joe. Joe. <laughs> hey, Joe. Him. We love you. Don't yeah. Listen. So Joe was listening and you know what he said? And I want to, I'm not going to say it was a good point or a bad point. I want your opinion on it first, but he's like, he's like, Hey, you know how you guys do that word of the day segment? 
And I was like, yeah, that's like the most popular great morning, you know, segment we got. And he's like, why isn't it called the, the word of the week? Because you do it every week. You know why I take it back? Fuck Joe. Fuck you, Joe. <laughs> No, 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 no. We're not going to say fuck Joe. I said, I said, Joe, you could, you could eat my ass, bro. Get the fuck out of my face. Yeah, <laughs> say some yeah. shit like that. What the fuck? Change my diaper, bro. No, just. Okay. <laughs> what's so up, bro? Joe, you oh know what? Joe, Joe's out of the box thinker, man. So that's what's up, man. Yeah. That's, what's up. Oh my that's cool, God. man. Just wanted your honest opinion on that. But, you know, we're, uh, we're here. We're at that, uh, that sad, that sad, sad time of the podcast where we, uh, we start wrapping things up. I know it's, 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 it's got to be here. You know, it's over. I'm sorry. We got to go. But you know, we're gonna go around the the computer screen here, and we're gonna do what we always do, and that is our last minute plugs. So, starting with Stephanie, my friend, the queen. You got any last minute plugs? Hold on one second. I'm going to tell you right now. I have a fact. Hold on. You ready? Ooh, Stephanie's facts. That's right. I have a fact. Espérate. One second. Because remember, I just Google them shits and then I give it to you. Espérate. Wait, wait. You're doing facts now? Cállate. You got got three. (laughs) Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I think it's time. I think it's time for Stephanie to give us a fucking fact. Stephanie. Did you know that snakes can predict? Earthquakes? I did how, how? 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 They're snakes. What the fuck? You're yeah, not. They, I don't... they hiss. They hiss in the back. Hello. Oh my god. You ain't, of, you ain't never heard a snake hiss before. That's the most you know, gut wrenching yeah, segment we got because Stephanie will just find it and then she won't explain it to us. It drives me nuts. She doesn't. She's just like, that's it. That's all it's the information fact, you get. Man. You want to know it's more? A, you gotta fucking fact. look it up. <laughs> all right. The other one is. Two infectious diseases have been successfully wiped out, which is smallpox and rinderpest. Did you know that? Did you I know knew that? about smallpox? Oh, look at that. Look at you. You winning today. And now the third one. Perate. Let me scroll. What the fuck? 7% of American adults believe that chocolate milk comes from brown cows. Wow. <laughs> you say 70%? No, way. That's a no I said 7%. No oh, seven, seven. Okay, that 7%. sounds percent Damn. But that's still too high. That's, that's that is, crazy. Yeah, thank you. That thank you, Rufus. <laughs> that is too high. That's, yeah. So, yeah, my last minute plugs. Follow me. I love you guys. You love Steph. You already know the vibes. I love you guys. That's pretty much it. I don't got shit other than my fucking facts, so... Yeah. <laughs> Why? We love you too, Steph. We love you Thank too. Thank you. I fucking love All you. Right. You know, you already know the vibes. Hell yeah. You Come on. What is this? What is this? Yay. Oh, man. Yay. Oh, because you know, you listen, listen, listen. I'm taking charge. That's what happened. So, oh, man. You better... Let's go. Mama Knock the shit off <laughs> anyway. So, uh, moving along go. to uh-huh. Jimmy, my friend, you got any last minute plugs? Yeah, man, you guys already know you can follow me on Instagram at slightly special with two L's on the end. Also, hit me up on Wait, 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 wait. You said at slightly uh-huh. special, politically spelled correct, but throw two L's on the end. <laughs> all about that. Politically vibe, spelled man. correct. Yeah, 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 for sure. We're all about that artistic vibe, man. You know what I mean? We love <laughs> art, creation, and innovation, man. Also, you guys can follow me on TikTok. TikTok, not Tic Tac, but Tic Tac. At Tic-tac. slightly special with three L's on the end, because somebody out there keeps trying to take slightly special brand name. It's crazy. And then, yeah, man, yo, man, good energy, good vibes. You guys already know what's going on. We got merch coming on the way. I'm working really hard, man, trying to get this stuff out to everybody to spread the love and spread the wealth. Nice. And if you have previously been on the podcast and you were listening to this podcast, I owe you 
a shirt is going to be on the house for free, man, just because we appreciate you guys so much. So please reach back, get connected, man, get plugged in so we can all be a creative collaborative, man. Let's all build and grow together. Shout out to my G in the background with the Corona. That's priceless, my nigga. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The bronze kneecap in the back, man. Bronze kneecap. Killing word. Me. Word bronze up, brother. Man. Come on over here. Give yourself uh, yeah, back. yeah. Yeah. Curtis, you got any last minute plugs? You already know where to find me. I'm on Instagram, the bronze kneecap. SoundCloud, the same thing. Follow me. You said the, the Bronx kneecap? The yes, bronze. with a D A, duh. The B- you can follow me there. I actually got some. I got something coming soon, so just stay tuned. I'm gonna come up with some more music. So. Yeah, I've been seeing your work, man. I've been seeing that. I've been, I've, I've been catching it. I've been, I've been catching the, the little, little hints here and there. So I'm excited to see what's coming. Wait a minute, is it the bronze knee cap or knee caps? There's a chick named Gabby that calls so, herself the bronze knee caps. Gonna be so mom. it's spelled D. A like duh bronze. Oh, so, yeah, the bronze. I and it's uh yeah. So D A crossed out. You'll see it. The bronze. I got him kneecap two P's. I got him. Oh, it's it's one P. Well, no, no, no. I say zero pulse, zero followers on the, the bronze kneecap. Nah, that ain't him. My so it's D A B R O N Z E K N E E K A P K A P. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Don't think about Brandon, man. Don't think about rebranding. I got it. We, we deep in the game. <laughs> you got it? All right, cool. And by the way, I do appreciate All right. this. I was I was soaking up the game, man. You you really are wise, yo. So thank, thank you, you so know, much. I appreciate it, man. man. I can talk to you myself, man. Get to networking. You know what I mean? I got beats for days. So hit me up. Hey, listen. Let's get to work. I'm I'm I'll tap you okay on your DM. And if you got fire. I'll make sure the artists jump right on it and I'll jump on it. If it's fire, it's undeniable. I rocks with it. Let's do it. All right, bet. Welcome. Love, Welcome. You. Yep. Likewise. One small last thing, man. That's love. Love for love. Also, just starting Monday up on the website, you guys can go check it out, man. SlightlySpecialMedia.com. If you're an underground artist or you just somebody in the streets that's trying to get something, but you can't afford a major studio type of deal to come out man we just put up a package it's less than a thousand dollars you can get photography videography sound engineered you can get a song mixed mastered and we can get you up on the podcast for promotion man because we understand what it's like for the cats in the streets man with a hustle so please check that out on the website that shit was updated last monday please reach out man so we can get to work man Bless. That's my last plug. My bad, Mercy. That's it. No, you're good. No, good. No, I, I wanted you to get it all out. Well, hell yeah. Um, before we uh go into our honored guest, I just want to say again, thank you to my uh my two friends here. Uh, you love Steph on Instagram, and that is slightly special. Two I L's at the end you know, on Instagram. Um, great morning yeah. underscore the podcast Sorry. on Instagram. Oh, you know what? I wanted to, before before I plug anything else i just want to say uh you know stay tuned we official we're gonna officially announce it right here right now um we are in the works for our back to school special here at the podcast so stay tuned for that i think that'll be dropping september 1st but stay stay tuned for that that'll be our next special anyway going back into the uh follows you can follow uh um you can follow great morning underscore the podcast you can um i i already said that you can uh yeah, that's it. And, uh, you know, moving into uh, Rufus Black, my friend, really appreciate having you here, man. It was an honor. Thank you. Please tell us any last minute plugs you got, man. Hey, man, I just want to say I am honored to be on this podcast, man. It is a great platform. Y'all ask some incredible questions. I love the way the whole setup is, man. It was it was very fun. You know what I mean? And um, I appreciate y'all, you know, because sometimes, you know, um, you know, people kind of get caught up when they do a podcast. They want to be the breakfast club. They want to be different things. And they don't want to give people the information. This podcast gives people the information that they need. It's fun involved with it. It's clowning. It's drinking. It's having a good time. But at the same time, the information is on this podcast. And that's what I respect. So thanks for having me, man. I look forward to doing it again and bringing some big, big, big artists to y'all podcast. I'm definitely going to do that for sure. Oh, man, that would be amazing. 
We really appreciate hey, it. Hey, man, I, I really, like I said, I really appreciate having you here. It was great. It was great to meet you. I was really excited for this. Um, but yeah, hit me, uh, hit me up on Instagram if you, uh, you want to come back on again, man. Oh, hey, man. What's your Instagram? Plug Hold us up. in, though. Plug us in. Give us those links. I, I oh, got you. What's your, what's your Instagram channel? Oh, I, okay. Yeah, I'll do it again. Uh, my my personal is uh, Christian, so C-H-R-I-S-T-I-A-N-D, as in dog, and then Merms, as M-U-R-M-S. So Christian D. Merms. It didn't come up. Hold on. Christian D. Merm or Merms S. It's oh Christian D Merm, sorry, no S. I forgot. Yeah, I see it, Christian David, and you holding a baby, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. All right, we tapped in, fam. Oh hell yeah, I'm about to hit you back, man. I appreciate it, but yeah, man. Uh, it was it was amazing having you on the podcast, and you already know whatever you need, we, we got it. Let's get it. Hell yeah, that was our episode, guys. Great morning. Great morning. Yes. Might as well stick yourself in. One more lion. We're about to corner the market. Yes. Double trouble. What a damn. Let's get it. I'm a terrorist with a bomb strapped to my lever neck. Assassin, bitch, shoot my, shoot my like a clarinet. Rapper scared to death, and I ain't even air him yet. I took a shan about two months ago, and I ain't wear it yet. I got rhymes that are body your top ten. Spit a hundred bars of murder with the oxen. Weeded up a loaded with toxins, mentally clear or sober. It don't matter, cause you will not win. Brutally beat a rapper while his whole team watches. Like I got Samson's hair and Davis slingshot. White women call me they dream. I walk in the room and get respect. You would think that new thing pop. I got a Mayweather IQ in the ring. Knocking the out the f them up in the strings. Just over here, right? Make gangsters lean. I got a Tyson combination for you, auto tune drag queen. All you gotta do is so fuck this game. I'm still one of the nicest. In my blunt, any I'm up before I pick up the dice. King of my city, we're international. Back in '94, leaving rapper shook on how I kicked on the door. That shit for no beef. Well, I'm never never wrong. I'm nicknamed Da Vinci Cause I'm quick to pull up and draw. I renegade monster with mechanical arms, rebuffing body parts. I leave them by your mom front lawn. Yeah, bad man, rude boy. I do freak still. I all these niggas telling me go baby or they meat mills. Old heads let it slide and don't say shit until they son come home, turn down on some hoes. Popping pills like white girls from broken homes. Most of these rappers ain't artists. They some, they some clothes. Give me your mic. You can't have it back. This is hip hop. I'm sick of rap. All you gotta do is soak up your yeah. skin. I'm still one of the nicest so only that won't change your yeah. yeah. You don't wanna follow me. Get your name and leave your picture. Show me call of shit. I don't think you really wanna test this flame. I would advise you to please stay in your lane. Yeah. On that other shit, bread and butter shit, smuffing your brother under the cover. Real gutter shit, holster with the gun in it, busting it. Old school and my CD player got me punning it, bumping it. Glass got exotic rum in it. My flow was like a pool in the club, they jumping it, loving it, drawing this, they bumping it. Double trouble, make it bubble. You see what we coming with? Boom, back, gutter shit. My foot, they under it. Class since we running it. The mic got me touching it, the crowd start humming it. Hundred bands, mad lion counting it, thumbing it. Rufus Black, KRS one. We all up in it, world tours for sure. We get it jumping quick. What that thing? Yeah, we still busting it. All you